when I tell the people I'm growing hazelnuts, they're like, what? They look at me like I have three heads. They don't even know what a hazelnut is. When I say hazel bird, they're still wondering what the heck am I talking about? You know, I'm obsessed with hazelnuts. I just love hazelnut butter and hazelnut cake and hazelnuts and chocolate or chocolate with hazelnuts. That's why I'm trying to grow as many varieties as I can. The one that most people are familiar with is the European hazelnut. They have the largest nuts with thin shells. It's grown as trees. It thrives in zones five or higher, but it's often susceptible to eastern filbert blight. The American hazelnut could be grown in zone four and sometimes even three. It's grown as a shrub and it's more resistant to filbert blight. When mature, it could be eight to 12 feet high and spread from 10 to 15 feet wide. The European hazelnut and the American hazelnut have been cross-pollinated to create a hazel bird. This way, hazel birds could grow in zone four, maybe three, and produce larger nuts while being resistant to filbert blight. The last, but not least, and most hardy hazel is the beaked hazelnut. The nuts are smaller than hazel bird, but they are hardy to zone two. Whichever one you pick, it's better to have two or more for cross-pollination. And it's worth noting that beaked hazelnut will not cross-pollinate the hazel bird. You know, they're, they're also a very pretty shrub. I mean, if you're gonna plant a shrub without nuts and shrub with nuts, what would you prefer? Nuts. Filberts, also known as hazels, are in the birch family of plants. They are able to grow in various soils with pH from 5 to 8. They will grow best in rich, moist, but not heavy soil and full sun. Even though they will grow in the shade, but for high yield, they do prefer a sunny location. They don't have a single taproot. Their roots are spread deep below, just like the branches on top forming a great structure against soil erosion. You can see how cute they are. Only two, but there'll be more every year, as long as you have some hazelnut bushes nearby, cross-pollinating with them. Hazels are wind-pollinated. They are also very flexible in high wind and can act as a windbreak if planted in multiple rows or in front of tall trees. One-year seedlings are best planted in spring and are available from nurseries. But since seeds are open pollinated, each seedling might have different characteristics, such as nut size and ripening period. For example, my three hazel birds that I have gotten from the same nursery and I planted them next to each other ripen two weeks apart of each other. As far as all the nuts go, Hazelnuts are the quickest to bear fruit, so they're worth planting. They'll start producing nuts after about four years and continue for at least 50 more. After four years since planting, this is my first harvest. Hazelnuts are pretty resilient from insects and disease. They may even have little guardian angels in the form of a tiny tree frog like the spring peeper. This one is only half an inch long, but it will eat small insects like flies and beetles. Spiders also balance out the insect world, like this goldenrod crab spider that hides to surprise its prey. Or this large female orb weaver that builds beautiful spiral webs to catch the flying or jumping insects. This one appears fully mature and brimming with eggs at the end of its one-year lifespan. She will lay the eggs in a cocoon-like egg sac which will survive the winter on its own to hatch in spring. Nuts usually mature between September and October. 
nut clusters are ready for picking when the shells start turning brown and just start becoming easier to detach from the husks, but before becoming totally loose. Their husks might still have some green in them. This way I don't lose harvest due to falling or animals such as rodents, crows and blue jays. They are great food to have around during winter. One cup of hazelnuts provides about 35% protein and 45% dietary fiber. And thank God over 100% of daily recommended fat, of which almost 90% is unsaturated. They are rich in vitamins like E, B1, B5, B6, and B9 of folate. Be cool. They are also rich in minerals like potassium, calcium, phosphorus, zinc, selenium, manganese, iron, magnesium, and copper. And don't forget, when you get it from food, your body absorbs it and you don't piss it out. After harvest, dry husks should be removed. Semi-green husks could be dried first. If you pick them early, while the husks are totally green, the nuts in their husks should be left spread out to ripen in a sunny, breezy, but humid space, like a greenhouse for example. After I took the nuts out of the husks, I brought them home from the garden. I spread some parchment paper on a shelf near a window in a dry space. And I took the nuts and I spread them on the parchment paper in single layer. They will cure like this for two to three weeks for the shell to dry and harden. After they are nice and dry, I store them in a bowl and enjoy them all winter long. Or as long as they last. Very tasty. These three nuts are an example of different sizes that are possible from different hazel burt shrubs. So let's see what's inside. Tiny shell, tiny nut. Medium shell. Both nuts fill the shell very well. Medium nut. The largest nut that took the longest to ripen, almost a month longer than the other nuts. And I was so excited to open it. Turned out to be empty. <laughs> So I'll bring in a stenin for the empty nut and this is a true European hazelnut from Oregon. So if you cannot grow a zone 5 hazelnut, these hazel birds are quite tasty and bountiful in zones 3 and 4.